my name is Bob DeMott, and I've been teaching courses in massage therapy for 15 years. And today, we're going to be doing a deep tissue Swedish massage with acupressure. Your skin is your gateway to touch, and often, your feelings. In an average adult, it weighs almost eight pounds. A piece of skin the size of a quarter contains over three million cells, 50 nerve endings, up to 340 sweat glands, and almost three feet of blood vessels. There is a significant connection between touch and emotional health. Research has shown that physical contact plays an important role in the development of infants and in the vitality and happiness of adults. When someone is experiencing deep emotional pain and is comforted by the touch of a caring friend, healing endorphins begin to flow immediately. Several years ago, a study was conducted showing the number of times people touched in coffee shops around the world. In San Juan, Puerto Rico, they touched 180 times an hour. In Paris, 110 times. In Gainesville, Florida, it was two times per hour. And in London, they never touched. The majority of people who come to you for massage are there primarily to be safely touched and nurtured by another human being. As a massage therapist, you will feel ecstatic that you are often doing more to heal someone than most mental health professionals. And I truly hope that this video helps you to achieve this goal. I'd like now to cover some of the supplies that we use when we do a massage. Now you don't have to go into a large expense to have all these, but you will need some basic supplies. And let me cover a few of them now. First is a heating pad. This heating pad is approximately four pounds. You can get it at a medical supply store and it will run approximately $85. It has an on and off switch that your client can use to keep themselves at the right temperature that they want. Probably the most expensive thing that most people think they're going to get into is towels, sheets, and blankets. But I'd like to tell you that all of the sheets the blankets and most of the towels that I use I pick up in a second-hand store. I wash them thoroughly and since you're going to be going through the sheets, especially the sheets, quite frequently they're only good for about five or six washings and then you're going to have to throw them away. You can normally pick them up for about a dollar a piece at Goodwill. I'd like to cover the oil. The bottle that I use I pick up from a beauty supply store. They have a flip top that will prevent it from leaking oil when it's on the table. The oil that I use is just plain vegetable oil. However, I always get the expeller pressed, whether it is safflower oil or almond oil or walnut oil. You have to be extremely careful that a lot of people are allergic to walnut oil or even almond oil. So I tend to use the safflower oil, and I have not found anybody that's allergic to it yet. It is also the least expensive of all the oils. You do not need exotic oils. This not only goes on and it is applied easily to the skin, but it also comes off very, very readily with a clean towel. Next is to set an atmosphere, you're going to need several tapes, cassette tapes. For instance, one is brook sound, one is music, one is surf sound. Anything that you can have on hand, ask your client what they would like to listen to. And when you're playing the background music, it's white noise, it takes away the outside sounds. You should have a pillow. A pillow about this size to put underneath the knees or to put underneath the head. Plenty of towels to support different areas of the body, to cover parts of the body, and also in case you need extras to wipe off the excess oil. This is a paper clip. And the reason for this is when you have someone that needs to put a towel around themselves, if it's a woman, she will put the towel around. She will bring it around from her back to her front when you're going to be just working above. And you can use the clip 
to hold the towel together in the front very securely. I use little square cotton pads and I use these for the eyes and I use witch hazel. I put the witch hazel on the pad, I just saturate the pad and lay it directly over the eye on each eye and then I cover it when I'm working on them when they're on their back. It's very soothing and very cooling and very refreshing to the eye. This is a roller that you can use on the back of the leg going up and down or in the middle of the back. This is a little tool, a little gadget that I made myself but it costs maybe 15 or 20 cents. It's a little drawer handle it's a little section of dowel that I have screwed onto it from the top. I put some enamel on it and I use this to apply pressure on pressure points. It's a lot easier than having to use your thumb as you'll see when we do the rest of the tape. If you have something like this, it takes a lot of stress out of your fingers. A candle, this is a scented candle. You can either use a candle or you can use incense to liven up the atmosphere in the room. I have a little spike ball that is good for you. Squeeze it in your hand. It massages your hand. You can put it underneath your feet when you have a sock on and run your foot back and forth across it. Your best friend is going to be a nail file. If you scratch somebody just one time with a hangnail, that destroys the whole massage. Always make sure that your fingers are smooth down the sides before you start any massage. Check them an hour before your client shows up. This is a heavy duty massage vibrator. It gets right through the muscles. When you apply a lot of pressure to it, you can go right through the whole body into the table. You don't have to have something like this, but it's nice. I'd like to show you a little bit about the table itself. You can get tables through catalogs all over the country. You will be able to get them for anywhere from $400 to $1,000 a piece. This particular table I happen to have made myself. It is about 35 pounds. It will support about 750 to 800 pounds, and it's portable. It just folds right up in the middle. The table itself, when you are trying to figure out what height to use for a table, the best way I can tell you to measure it is to put your hand down at your side, bend your wrist up. That height is the height that the table should be. As you can see, this table is about two to three inches low for me. Now let's go on to our massage. I'd like to welcome Lisa as our subject for today. We're going to be doing a full body massage and as she goes off to remove her clothing, I'd like to have you come back and get underneath the sheet and face down with your face in the hole. And I'm gonna go wash my hands and I'll be back in a minute. Okay. Okay, Lisa, I'm back. Are you ready for a massage? I sure am. Okay. One of the first things we do is to properly position your client on the table and to make sure that they're comfortable and warm. So straighten out the sheets and the covers. One of the things that I do is I will take, because usually they're barefooted, I will take a towel and wrap it around their foot. Okay, she's 
ready to go. Now, the next thing you do just before you do the massage is to place your hands about on the hips and on the shoulders and gently rock them back and forth. And this is just to prepare them for the massage. It kind of sets the mood. Once you put your hands on your client's skin, never take your hands off. Never break contact. I like to make my client very comfortable by doing the back side first. The front side is extremely vulnerable. And so by getting them used to your touch on the back side, then they become more receptive to you doing the front side of their body. And I always start on the lower left corner of the table. And that is in this position right here. Now this is true of whether I do the back side or the front side when I turn them over. I come back to here because it gives me continuity for doing each leg and in the back. When I turn them over, I will do the front side here. So uh, when I get to the other side, I don't get confused as to whether I really did this side or not. I always know that by starting here and ending around the other side, that I never get confused as to what I have done. Okay, uncovering. Pull the blanket up across and then bring it up just a little bit so that it forms an angle and it will stay out of your way. You must always be in control of the session. And that is especially true when you are tucking in the sheet. Bunch the sheet up, grab a hold of it in your hand right here, and jam it underneath like that. Bring this up, tuck it. She's got a bathing suit bottom on, just tuck it right in there and on the side. This exposes the entire leg. Now you can go ahead and do the massage without worrying about the sheet coming down and getting caught in your fingers. Okay, the oil that I use, I put into bottles that I've been able to get from beauty supply stores and just pop the lid open. Put the oil in your hand. Now remember to always keep your hand in contact with their skin once you have touched their skin. Never take your hands off because the minute you do, they want to know where you're at. Keep your hand in contact. Put the oil in your hand and rub the oil into your hand and warm it up first.
up to the thigh, start adding a little bit of shoulder pressure to it, and start swaying with your movements. Doing a massage is kind of like a dance between you and the hands and the body. Add some pressure. You can see we're getting a lot of twist in the muscle here. Okay, be thinking about your next stroke at this point. The next stroke is going to be called the figure eight. You can naturally go right into it from this point. Your right hand on the leg, your left hand laying on top at a little bit of an angle. Just lay it over top of your fingers. Again, it's like squeegeeing the oil ahead of your fingers. Ahead of your fingers. From this point, now the reason it's called a figure eight is because you're going to go up and then your hands change and go down. So when you get to the end of each stroke, you rotate your hands. Now I'll show you how to do it by adding a little bit of body movement to it. And then, because you're going up with your hands, your stroke is going up. If you want to switch the stroke, so instead of going up on the inside, you want to go up on the outside. When you get to the top, don't switch. Just go back down. Now you see you're coming up on the outside, down on the inside. Once you learn the stroke, don't think about your hands, or you'll get confused. Then go down below to the calf. Always pushing harder, going up, and just letting your hands glide down. Now, don't switch. Go up. You're doing a reverse now. Okay, be thinking of your next stroke. The next one is going to be the kneading. So you naturally go right around to the end of the table start working with your thumbs. As you go with your thumbs, you should make little circles about the size of silver dollars. Work your way around the leg. Now I'm holding and supporting her leg underneath. So it gives me, gives me plenty of pressure to squeeze. Don't do too much on the back of the knee. When you get above, instead of down here where you were just using the fingertips, when you get above the knee into the thigh, use all of your finger all the way up to the bottom of your thumb. Like this. back down, you do some knuckle work, hand over hand. Make sure you go all the way from the ankle to the knee, and when you're above the knee, from the knee to the hip. Her legs get nice and warm from circulation now. Now you get your shoulders into it. Okay, the next stroke is going to be the tapping. Come around to the side again, and this time when you do the tapping, just like doing karate chops, 
but you're going to do it with your fingers spread open so that as you do it, your fingers just kind of slap. You don't want to hit the leg too hard on the calf. Go all the way around. And when you go above the knee, close your fingers and use the side of your hand. Now you can actually go into a karate chop.
feel, it may feel more comfortable to use your knuckles. I believe one of the reasons why we have so many problems with our feet and our internal organs in these days is because prior to about 150 years ago, man used to walk around in moccasins or go barefoot, and by walking on the rocks and the dirt, sticks, their feet may have gotten calloused, but they were also well massaged. We came out with hard-soled shoes and cement over everything. We don't have a chance to get our foot massaged like we used to. And so we have a lot of internal problems. All of the bottom points of the foot, pressure points, all across the foot are directly related to your internal organs. Your sinuses are up in the toes and here your heart, your lungs, down into the intestines, the backbone, the reproductive system, down in the heel. By massaging the bottom of the foot, you can make a lot of back aches and stomach aches go away. Now, I know Lisa would probably let me do this for the next half hour, but I'm going to be moving on in a minute. Make sure you get the ankle. Now, you're going to be doing more of the ankle and the foot when your client is on their back. It doesn't hurt to get into all the little spots of the heel, the ankle. We'll be stretching the Achilles later. Then get off the table. Grab a hold of her foot, take your whole hand, wrap it around her foot, and pull, and at the same time, squeeze her toes and her foot together. This really feels good to squeeze the foot together. At least it's got a small cut on the front here, and I want to avoid that. Pull and squeeze.
Now we're going to be doing the back by moving the blanket all the way down, taking the heating pad, turn it sideways, lay it across the thigh, and cover it up again, and then bring the sheet down to about two inches above her waistband, and then tuck the sheet into the waistband and curl it under so that it stays out of the way so it doesn't keep coming up on you. Another thing you want to do to make sure that they're nice and comfortable is cover their arms so that the arms don't get chilled. Just like a doctor, Lisa. We only uncover the part we're working on. Okay, the whole back, just like on the leg, you're going to be doing an effleurage. Put your fingertips together. Bring your hands down slowly. When you get over the hip, you spread your hands out and your fingers go out to the side and your thumbs come in and press. You go out until your fingers touch the table. Then draw back, pulling all the way up till you get to the scapulas, the shoulder blades, and then come up over the top and then lean forward as you press your hands out and push her down to the table. We'll do that with some oil. over your hands so that you have the weight to push down on her shoulders. You don't have to go way out on her arms. Just stop at where her arms start. Do about four or five of these. Is that hard enough? This is one of my favorite strokes on the body, is a nice long stroke on the back. And then go around to the side. And just like on the leg, you're going to do a petrissage, but the petrissage is all the way across the back. You're not going to get much twisting in it. everybody's favorite stroke, the figure eight. And here we go. Again, pushing up and down. Now you don't have to worry about pushing toward the heart on this stroke, but do half the back at a time. Push up and push down. And again, to reverse, just don't switch. Down, now switch. Now rather than reach across the table, just go around to the other side to do the other side of the back. But keep your hand on her so she knows where you're at. Figure eight.
Now don't switch. Go up. Your hands will naturally go in the opposite direction. stroke, but be very fluid as you go from one stroke to the next. Never take your hands off and don't stop moving once you get started. You go into the feathering. Put your fingers right between the ribs and you'll feel the ribs and then just start drawing at that angle. You lift them from the side and bring your fingers right over to the middle of the back and alternate hand over hand. thought that was wonderful, she's going to like this one. Take your thumb, start right at the base of the skull, go right down the spine. Push just hard enough to get into that muscle and give yourself enough room to go all the way down to the tailbone and then go up the other side. Right up into the base of the skull. Back down. stroke is going to be to massage the trapezius muscle. You put your fingers, all four of your fingers, right on her collarbone and just keep them in that position. You don't squeeze with these fingers, they're just there to steady your hand. You take your thumb, this is what you're massaging with. Get in there deep. Once you start doing that, Put your other hand so that your thumb is against their armpit and your hand is at a 90 degree angle with the spine. If your hand's not big enough, you can keep your thumb up next to your fingers. I use this just to kind of steady my hand to keep it in the right position. Then take this hand and bring it only up till it's parallel to the spine and grab it with this thumb. So it's push up the muscle, reach over top with your thumb and grab it and squeeze. Kind of like a scapular trapezius squeeze. Just push it up there and grab it. Looks like it takes a lot of coordination to begin with, but once you do it very slowly, one hand and then the other, it becomes very easy. Now you'll notice that I always do one side and then the other before I change to a different stroke. I don't do all my strokes on one side and then all the strokes on the other side. I like to keep it nice and even and smooth. Now I'll just go to the other side. Again the fingers against the collarbone, get this thumb going. This 
hand. You can put your thumb here or keep it up here. And I'll keep it up here this time just to show you what it's like. Get it going here. Now just take this and push it up. Lisa knows, and as I've taught many times in my classes, massage is more than just massaging the muscle. It's compression, it's pressure, it's extension. Now, a lot of people don't know how far their bodies will go. The next stroke that I'm going to show you will express that very clearly. Take your client's arm, lay it on their back, immediately that opens up the scapula. If you want to bring that up even more, fold a towel and place it under the shoulder. It opens it right up. Now Lisa is very flexible in here. There are some people whose backs, men and women, where their shoulder blade doesn't hardly move up at all. But that's okay. There's two ways to do this stroke. Once the shoulder blade is open, you can pull on it, just pull on it, stretch it, extend it. This is something the shoulder blade never gets a chance to do unless you do it for somebody. You don't have to pull really hard, just let it open. There's muscles underneath here that you want to get at. You can do it this way with your hand going up with your fingers massaging those muscles. Or you can do it from the opposite side, which is very nice and easy to do. Go around, take your thumbs and knead it. This is Lisa's favorite, I know. And don't be afraid to work it. Everybody that you do this to will tell you that it feels so good. Now obviously if somebody's had a broken shoulder or something else, you're going to always make sure beforehand that you don't do any damage to their body. But you find that out before you do the massage. If a person has had a broken leg or they have scars on their body or they have a sprained ankle, or any part of their body that is damaged. You want to avoid it or ask them if it's okay. Now the same thing is true of varicose veins. If the veins protrude above the skin, do not touch the leg. If they're little spider veins, then you can go ahead and work with it, just like they weren't even there.
take their arm off their back. You be in control. Don't let them help you. If they help you, put it back where it was, and you tell them, this is my job, not yours. Now we go into a back spread. There's several ways to do this. One is to put your hands together, like in a steeple, and then push with your hands together like this, and that will spread your hands out, and then go all the way out. But push down with your shoulders over your hands, and push your back apart, spread it. Another technique for doing the back spread is to put one hand on this side, one hand on this side at the bottom, and switch. Now, like in doing the figure eight, if you want to go in the opposite direction, just don't cross your hands over. Go up and go back down. Now switch. Now there's a third way of doing this. Rather difficult for men that have hair on their arms because the oil will trap in the hair and twist it in little knots. It's not very comfortable. But for a lot of the women doing this, it's very easy. They put their elbows on their back and push. All right, Lisa. pretty well loosened up. The small of the back is usually where most people carry their stress, besides the top of the shoulders. In order to get into relieving some of the pain in the lower back, you need to get in that space between the hip and the ribs. And there's two ways of doing this. One is in that space between the hip and the ribs. And there's two ways of doing this. One is to put your hand in that spot and push down with your fingertips, put your other hand on top, and just massage. You're really massaging these two muscles from the side, from each side. Not on top, but from the side. And you don't want to go way over to the side and get into here. You want to be right up against the side of the muscle on the lower back. You can go around like this from the opposite side If a person has really low back pain, this will take a lot of that pain away. Or you can put your knuckles in here and use your thumb and go back and forth. It's usually up to the client which one they like. Which one do you like, Lisa? With the fingers. Okay. So I've done it like this with the fingers. Now rather than doing it this way with my thumb, I'll go around to the other side. Like this. It's a little more general, less specific, so it doesn't bother the muscle that much. Rogers. She's absorbed most of the oil on her back. I finish off the back by coming up here 
and just taking my thumbs and rubbing them into the neck. And I generally apply quite a bit of pressure in here by leaning forward, using my shoulders to apply pressure to my thumbs. to the side and there's a there's a trick to doing this and that is cupping your hands so that you can trap the air for the tapping on the back as you do this it's alternating one and then the other and as, as you do each one the louder the sound not a slapping sound with the fingers like that but a cupping sound, like trapping the air. Thank you. 